That result against Crystal Palace might not look terrible at the end of the season. They're a good team. They're a decent team. They'll cause a lot of teams that are better than West Ham a lot of problems. And when you start looking at the comparative fixtures of who we've just played and then who they go on to play, actually, our results don't look too bad. I think Fulham, since we played them, we beat Fulham. Actually, they've been all right, with the exception of um, Sheffield United, of course. Uh, Chris, uh, Aston Villa look like they can go on and they can start certainly win a few more games. Uh, Leeds have bounced straight back following uh, their performance against us. Actually, they're a good performance. It's just really they, we beat them. They've gone back and they've beat a Newcastle emphatically. So a lot of the times we play these teams, we do all right. And even though they're, you know, the games can be a little bit tight and they can be a little bit scrappy, then the opposition then go on and beat the next people that they play and so on and so forth. So this may well prove to not be a bad uh, result against Crystal Palace, who are a good team, are well-organised and are getting better all the time. Some really good attacking players. Uh, we learn, I don't know what we learn from ours, but I do think it's going to be a good experience for Saeed Ben Rama. Uh, why? Well, because he wasn't that great. I thought there was... He flattered to deceive. I thought that they marked him really, really well. I thought he got bullied a little bit. And I so I, for that, I think he would have learned a lot. He got a lot of praise following his first start that he had against Leeds. And a lot of that praise certainly came from me. But I don't think it will do him any harm at all to have his collar felt and taken off the pitch. Because it will give him a little bit of a reality check. And I think it may make him come back next time with a bit more of an improved performance. He'll know what, what he's up against a little bit more. Now, I'm not saying that he didn't face players that tried to bully him out of the game in the championship or even before in his career. Of course he did. But I just think maybe David Moyes will be able to turn around and say, well, hold on, this is this is what we expect. Um, and I do think he'll come good. I do think. But he's not going to be brilliant in every game. And I there was a comment. And my, I can't remember which video it was. One of the videos this week where somebody popped in and said, Saeed Ben-Rama's West Ham's best player. He's not. I can't remember who wrote it. The comment's on there. Um, but I think he's new to the channel. He's not. He's not our best player. Declan Rice is our best player. Maybe Ogbonna. Antonio, uh, possibly, when he's on top form. These are the people we're looking at. Ben-Rama's going to have to come in and start scoring goals and assisting goals regularly. But it's fine, because we don't want him to be lauded as our best player, yet we want him to ease his way into the team. We want him to come in and start doing well and work within the team framework, rather than coming in and being some sort of big superstar. He will do absolutely fine. Somebody who has come in and somebody who had a terrific performance uh, was Vladimir Soufal over on the right side. They'll be pleased to see the back of him. When I say day, I'm talking about Wilfred Zaha, and I'm talking about um, Abire Easy, which is, I was, I was watching him and I was thinking, that's a shame. Not just because I couldn't sing his name, but it's a shame we didn't sign him. I quite like him. I think he looked pretty good. I think he would have done a good job at West Ham. I think he would have suited David Moyes' system really well. But they'll be pleased that they don't have to play against Vladimir Soufal any time soon. That's for sure. Um, but it was a complete performance. Attacking, uh, defending but his positional sense, he seemed to sniff danger. And that's a hell of an attribute to know who the opposition's danger men are, where you should position yourself. He just always appeared to be in the right place at the right time. Fabianski didn't do anything wrong. His distribution worries me. He really does. Not that he gave the ball away, but he doesn't deal with it quickly. He doesn't... When I just said, for instance, that a Sue Fowl sort of managed to see danger and sniff out danger... Fabianski doesn't seem to see opportunity. Don't throw the ball out quickly or roll it out quickly. And that's something that I do feel needs to be addressed, certainly. I also don't like the way the team, we so often start to attack, get into the opposition, the final third, the opposition's third. And then the ball, sometimes we, we get a little, a little press and then we get pressed back and we end up passing the ball back to Fabianski who then hoofs it up the pitch. I don't like that. I wish we hadn't done it. And I'm not talking about him clearing it from a counter-attack. I'm talking about us part having it being attacking position and passing the ball all the way back to the goalkeeper. Don't like to see that. We've got to talk about Declan Rice before I get to the what was the title of the video, by the way. Declan Rice was was absolutely sensational. I thought he was absolutely brilliant. And I think the more he plays like that, the harder it is going to be to hang on to this player. Because, I mean... He's got everything. What do you want? He's become a complete 
midfielder. The goals are coming. The goals are on their way from this player. Very close to scoring. He's having a couple of shots each game. We know we're a set-piece team, so he's going to get his fair share of headers and stuff like that. Don't forget, he's also assisted. He did the flick on for uh, two games ago. Did the flick on for Suchek's goal, didn't he? Um, Long-range passing. I, I mentioned in the review, I called him Glenn Hoddle. He was playing like Glenn Hoddle. Uh, pick your player. You know, it was almost like David Beckham when David Beckham would, would play those Hollywood passes. Right to left, whenever you'd see Beckham playing a centre of the park. There's been lots of them. Those sort of playmakers who play the long pass. How many times have you seen Paul Pogba play those passes and he gets absolutely lauded for it? I thought he was controlling the game. Like, the, the way he carries the ball forward, there were a couple of times during the game where he'd look to turn back to the defender and he'd have MacArthur and Milanovic or something stuff his name. Milanovic, that one. And he'd have him, those two would be there and Declan Rice be in the middle. It looked like he was going to turn around to pass to the goalkeeper. He'd drop his shoulder and he'd go and he'd just dart in between them. And he'd dribble. He'd actually travel with a ball and he'd taken two players out of the game. Not with sort of Ronaldinho type skill, just pure misdirection. He'd drop his shoulder, look like he was going back into defence and actually, no, he'd go the other way. Which is really impressive because he's not overly quick, um, Declan. Brilliant. So passing was good. Dribbling was good. Interceptions were absolutely first class. He's heading. Um, He's attacking, he's defending. What more do you want? This is a complete midfielder. And in our player ratings video, it's something that Gio said. He said when we were dismissing before the number of teams that would want to come in for him, we were thinking, well, maybe it's only just sort of like Chelsea. We were judging him before as a defensive midfielder. Well, he's becoming far more than that. He is becoming all-encompassing. He is he's absolutely tremendous. And I hope we do keep hold of him. I hope, I'd like to hope that, the captaincy carries some weight and he sticks with us, but um, I can't speak highly enough of him. I, I gave Souffal man of the match, but it took a performance like that to not make Declan Rice man of the match. Absolutely brilliant. Um, to the subject at hand, which is Lanzini. Lanzini has to start the next game, has to start the game against Chelsea. I, I, again, we were talking about this in the Patreon video. I don't want, I don't want to get on Four Nails back. I don't want to get on the Fornicator's back or anyone's back. I want to be doing fun videos about him. But I think the fact that he seems to be a guaranteed starter, a guarant one of the first names on the team sheet, puts undue pressure on him. Because when you are a guaranteed, when you're one of the first names on the team sheet, you've got to deliver with, with goals and assists or whatever your, whatever your job may be. Um, I don't want him to be that. Some of my favourite players, I think of George Paris. I would think as one. I think a Steve Potts another, a Ginger Pele, Cole and Cole. Some of my favourite players, and these players have all got something in common. They're all cult heroes at West Ham, right? They are all. Um, none of them are guaranteed first team starts. A lot of them would have periods outside the team, but we warmed to them. We took them to their hearts. That's how I want to be with four nails. It is a basic. So I don't want him. Far be it. I don't want him to be sold or anything like that. But he needs a period out of the team where he's not a guaranteed starter. And Lanzini came in and he looked fresh and he looked dynamic and he looked like he was going to make something happen at all times. And I think, I was going to say served his punishment. It's not really a punishment. But he served his time in the doldrums. I think Lanzini has come back from his injury. I think that's that's proven. But I now, and I include the goal against Tottenham, but I now think that's two or three performances where he's come off the bench and he's played well. He's impacted how the team play. In this instance, he impacted the result. Or the way he held on to the ball, the patience he had, and he played in Soufal. So Soufal played the ball over. Uh, Sebastian had a fantastic scissor kick. But he played his part, Lanzini, just in the way he did against Tottenham. And I struggle to think of exactly what game he's cut. He'd come on another time as well and looked really, really good. There's got to be some reward for that. There's got to be something on offer for David Moyes where David Moyes can say, OK, you, if you... If I bring you off the substitutes bench and you perform like that, you get to stay in the team. We've discussed this is what happens with, with Balbuena and so on and so forth. And I think when you also take into the equation of saying that to Lanzini that Fornells has played poorly, I think it sends out the wrong message. If Fornells plays as badly as he's as he's just played, and I know he wasn't terrible, but he keeps missing and, and he works hard and, and all these things we know. 
But when you were in a, when you're an attacking midfielder, and that's what he is. I know he played on the left, but by and large, his job, or it should be, an attacking midfielder, is to is to create. And when he's not really doing so, and then he gets taken off, and then Lanzini comes on, and actually he does, he does create, he does cause problems. I've no doubt about it. They were, they probably didn't care. That, Crystal Palace probably wanted Fawn else to stay on the pitch. They probably, you know, they were probably disappointed that he. He left the pitch and Lanzini came on. I'm sure Lanzini caused that defence uh, more problems. It have to send out the right message and I'd want him to start because, and maybe the next game is not a great one for it. I understand that. It's Chelsea because he's going to, David Moyes is going to want to start with a defensive team in this one. I understand that and pack men behind the ball. But we've had a go at teams. I like the way we had a go at Man U. Yes, we lost, but... I sometimes look at it, I think we need an additional creative player on the pitch. I looked at Crystal Palace with Benteke playing well. And then they had, obviously, Townsend on the right side in this game. Then on the left, they had Eze and Zaha. I thought, OK, you've got, you've, you've, really, you've got four players there who are basically just looking to hurt the opposition, hurt West Ham. And that's what I want us to do. Whereas... I felt when we played Crystal Palace, our team, it was Bowen wanted to, but he didn't quite. It was um, Haller. I'm struggling to know what to make of that performance. Wonderful goal, of course. Um, and it was Ben Rama just trying to take the game to them, I felt. I feel we need one more attacker in there. And I would like that attacker to be Lanzini because he is just so creative. Um, I think I mean, we need to find out. We need to find out as a club whether Lanzini has got a future or he hasn't. And I'd like to think he does. Look, overall... Not a bad performance, um, actually. An average performance. But I think, bearing in mind, I only think three or four players played well. I think there were some quite poor performances in there. Diop, I've, um, so, uh, Diop I, have, I haven't mentioned, but Diop's one of them. Fornells, I have mentioned. I thought Haller was largely anonymous for most of those games. What the difference between the teams was the centre forward, by and large, um, until he scored that overhead kick. But I think... Bearing in mind that wasn't our best performance of the season, we still come away with a draw against a good team. And they are a good team. Crystal Palace are not going to go and lose their, their next five or six games. At some point, very soon, they're going to beat someone. They beat someone well and they will beat a good team. They looked good against Tottenham. Same result. Thrashed West Brom. They thrashed Leeds. They're a good team. This will not look bad at all. But for the next game, for the Chelsea game, I want to see Manuel Lanzini.